Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing extremely well. So today in this video, we are going to solve problem of the day on the Geeks for Geeks platform. So today's problem is smallest factorial number, right? So first of all, we'll be understanding the problem statement, then the logic part, and then we'll be proceeding to the coding part. But before proceeding further to the video, make sure to subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed our channel till now and do join our telegram community as well. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter as well. The accounts has been mentioned in the description itself. So with that note, let's get started. So the problem says, given a number n, the task is to find the smallest number whose factorial contains at least n trailing zeros. Right, so what we have to do? We have been given a number n. Now we have to determine another smallest number. A smallest number we have to find out whose factorial contains at least n trailing zero. This n value has been given to us. So we have to determine the number, the smallest number, whose factorial contains at least n trailing zeros. Okay. Trailing means trailing means what? Let's say you are having a number 100. Zero, zero. So the zero that is occurring at the rightmost rightmost side they are the trailing zero for example you are having one zero two zero one zero two zero so at the rightmost side there is just one zero right so we will say here in one zero two zero the trailing zero is one there is only one zero right you must be getting it for example in 120 if someone will ask you that okay how many trailing zeros are here so just one just one right so that's what it is uh, so this in this example you can say n equal to 1 so we have to determine the minimum c the smallest number whose factorial contains at least at least one trailing zero so which is the minimum number 5 right and you can see of the factorial of 5 is what 120 and here you can see this is having one one trailing zero right so that's what it is for n equal to 6 means we have to determine the number whose factorial contains at least six trailing zeros so what is that minimum number 25 25 factorial if you will determine so it has at least six trailing zeros right so i hope the problem statement must be clear for you so whatever task is we have to complete the function find num which takes an integer n as input parameters and return the answer now the expected time complexity they have specified and auxiliary space they are expecting from us as constant so yeah then i hope the problem statement is clear so let's get started with the logic part now okay so first of all let's discuss some basics and then we'll you know think about it like how to approach this problem for example if you will say five factorial right five factorial five into four into three into two into one so this is equal to what 120 so there is what one trailing zero similarly if you will determine 10 factorial in this way 10 into 9 into 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 so here, here, first of all, just think about it, like for a number, how on the multiplying, right, for a factorial, we are doing the multiplication, like what number causes a zero to occur? Two and five, right? Two into five, that causes a zero, right? Here also, you can see that we were having this pair of five and two. That's why we got a zero here. If you will check for other factorial, one factorial, two factorial, three factorial. So here, there is no five present, right? We need a pair of two and five. Okay, we need this factors of 2 and 5. So here also, we are we are having how many? 2 trailing zeros. How? So this 10 is what? 2 into 5 only. And here we have this 5 and this 5. So if I'm asking you about the prime factors of 5 and 2. So there are 5 square into 2 square 2. Okay. So that's why we are having 2 trailing zeros. Similarly, the same thing applies here, here and here as well. Right. But... When you will see, right, for the prime factor, like when we are determining this factorial, so the occurrence of 2 is very frequent. For example, this 8 also, this will be 2 per cube, right? The occurrence of 2 is very frequent and for making a 0, we need 2 and 5 both. So we can, instead of saying that the occurrence of 0 depends on both 2 and 5, we can directly say it depends on 5 only because in factorial, you can see the occurrence of 2 is very frequent. So just if you are confirmed about the occurrences of 5, we can determine that how many trailing zeros will be there for a given factorial, right? On the basis of this scenario, there is a formula even. Let me tell you the formula. For example, a number is given to you. So how you will determine that its factorial will have how many trailing zeros? For example, we have 25. 
so the formula is n divided by 5 and divided by 5 by square and divided by 5 by q continue like this till the this value of n is divisible okay it's not giving zero or something as a quotient so n value is 25 25 divided by 5 25 divided by 5 square is 25 25 divided by 5 q so there's no need to proceed further this will give you zero itself right so stop right there from here you will get 5 from here you will get 1 so 6 right so for 25 factorial there will be there will be 6 trailing zeros and that's what we are having here uh, now if you will clearly observe this there's a pattern now like what it is for any number n like so for any value which would be having uh, at least n trailing zeros any value which would be having n trailing zeros it would be either it would be either equal to to 5 cross n or less than that it's not going to move beyond it it would be either less than or equal to that for example here when we were having we have to determine the value which is which is having at least one trailing zero so what is the minimum value we got five into one that is five now for n equal to two if they are asking so you will be having five into two ten right so here you can see this value ten is what equal to that of five cross two now three trailing zeros you have to determine the minimum value which contains which contains three trailing zero so what i told whatever value would be either it would be equal to five cross n or less than that so five into three if you will do you will get 15. so the minimum value is what minimum value is what here 15. right then for here the value have four trailing zeros four trailing zeros so five into four 20. 20 is the minimum value that is having four trailing zeros now the value the minimum value that is having at least six trailing zeros so what is the value if you will do five cross n five into six 30. we are having 30 right although the answer is 25 so what i mentioned the value would be either equal to five cross n or less than that or less than that so what we can do here now something must be ringing in your mind binary search yes you think about it right so what we can do is we can do a binary search where low value we can keep as zero and high value we can keep as five cross n now so low and high value we do have right so what we will do we will as we do in the binary search we will be calculating a bin number so as per the count of the trailing zeros in that mid number there could be two possibility either the count of trailing zeros would be greater than or equal to that of n or it would be less than that of n so if the count is less than that of n it means what we have to proceed in the we have to proceed further means we have to update the value of low as mid plus one as mid plus one right because still we haven't met our target we need a minimum number for which the count of zero is at least equal to that of n count of trailing zeros right and if and the possibility in the scenario is there that the count value is what greater than or equal to n it means what we will do we will update the value of high as mid because even mid can be a possibility in that case mid can be a possible answer right so that's what we'll be doing continuously right till the time low value is what low value is less than that of high now you must be wondering like how we'll be determining how we'll be determining the trailing zeros for a given number so for that we'll be using this formula only that that we just discussed now so this formula only we are going to use and that's it so that was a complete problem right so that was a complete logic i hope that is clear for you so we are good to proceed to the coding part now so here's our number find num that we are having it is taking an integer value n so if n value is equal equal to one then we have to simply return five Otherwise, we will continue with the binary search thing. So low low value is 0 and high value is 5 cross n. So till the time low value is less than that of 5, we will continue. So here we are calculating a mid. Now we are simply calling this function to which we are passing our bid number and n value. So let's see what we are doing in this function. So this function is all about calculating the trailing 0 part, right? So for trailing 0, the same um, formula that, that we just discussed in the video, right? So you know we were dividing our number by 5 then 25 like that we will continue so initially uh, we have taken this variable prod initialize this with 5 and the c will keep track of the count of zeros so here we see how like 
till when you have to keep dividing your number till the time till the time what it is prod value prod value is less than that of the less than equal to mid right so for example the uh, value that we have got right the mid value let's say we have got 15 and prod value is 5 okay 15 and 5 let's say we have so c plus equal to mid divide by prod so 15 divide by 5 if we do if this is your number so 3 we got 3 we got 3 right now next time we have to divide this number 15 by by 5 we got now like what would be the count of 0 we got 3 so next time we have to divide this number 15 by 25 so that's why we are updating the value of prod as prod into 5 means 25 now this number is not going to be divisible by 25 because it is lesser so that's what the condition is like you have to continue in this loop till the time prod value is less than or equal to mid so now prod value will be 25 and 25 is not less than or equal to 15 so we will break right there and obviously we should because you can see for 15 factorial there would be three trailing zeros only right so here this is a boolean function that's returning true or false on the basis of c. if the c value the count of zero value if it is greater than or equal to n we'll be getting true otherwise we'll be getting false right so that's what we are doing here so if fact mid n means like from if this function we have got true we have got true so what we are doing we are updating the value of high as mid otherwise we are updating the value of low as mid plus one right and at the last we are simply returning the value of low so that's what the complete code was and the complete problem i hope you must have got it in case of any doubt make sure to comment below and thank you so much for watching if you like the explanation do let me know in the comment section and are you solving potd daily let me know in the comment section that as well don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you everyone